Let's look at two body problems for objects on inclines. And let's take an incline and we'll look at inclines with no friction first and then we'll look at an incline with friction. So here is pulley and again it's a uh, essentially very very low mass pulley with no friction on the pulley and we'll call this um, M2 and we'll call the mass on the incline M1 and again <clears throat> here's the angle of the incline is theta and again I'll use uh, just the symbols for this problem and maybe we'll do a numerical problem in another video but we want to see the physics come out of this so uh, once again we follow our two steps first step is draw the free body diagram and the second step is then to write Newton's law for the objects for each object in each direction so we take M1 first and I'll draw it at an incline just the way it's sketched and then I'll draw M2 over here M2 and um, <clears throat> we can draw the forces on M2 as you can see it's being held up by a string there's the tension there and uh, what's pulling it downward is gravity its own weight M2 times mass times gravity <clears throat> let's look at mass 1 mass 1 is being pulled up or maybe it's being pulled down the incline um, or by gravity but it's being attached with the string and so therefore it has a upward tension and as we analyzed in the incline problems the gravity mg can be broken up into a force acting down the ramp or incline equal to m in this case m1g times the sine of the angle and a force pressing it into the incline equal to m1g times the cosine of the angle and there's one force left I've left out there that would be the ramp itself pressing up against the object the normal force notice that the normal force is perpendicular to the incline and m1g cosine theta is also perpendicular now we haven't def defined really what's going to happen here <clears throat> so let's say first of all let me re-emphasize that there is no friction in this particular example now let's also say that um, m2 is greater than m1 so that now we know which way this thing is going to move it's going to go downward and so m2 is going to move in this direction and therefore m1 would be moving in that direction so that's the direction uh, that we're going to assume it could go the other way if m1 were much larger but uh, we'll look at that another time so right now what's happening is that I'll draw my um, coordinate systems here this object mass 2 is going to be moving downward that means downward is going to be positive that means any arrow pointing downward is positive any arrow pointing upward is going to be negative m1 our coordinate system remember we tilted it for inclines x is now positive x I should say is now going up the incline and positive y well we'll make it look like that so we've tilted our our axis if you recall for the inclines so there's our general directions like that now we're prepared to write our uh, Newton law equations the second law equations and so we'll do it for um, X and Y for both of them uh, and so in the X direction for M1 we have the sum of the forces in the X direction equals M1A and in M1A uh, we have how many forces in the X direction we have two forces we have tension which is going to be positive and let me write that here we've noted our positive direction of the x-axis so that's going to be positive and that arrow is going to be negative tension is going to be positive and m1g times the sine of theta will be negative and that is going to equal m1a and 
And uh, we can do likewise for the y direction, although nothing very interesting is happening in the y direction. Um, as we, if we look back up at the diagram there, we can see that in this direction here, what is the acceleration? Uh, well, the object is moving in that perpendicular y direction, so therefore the acceleration in the y direction is going to equal zero. So in that case, we can write the sum of the forces in the y direction is going to equal zero. The forces must all sum to be zero. And um, let me just draw a dashed line here so we don't get those confused. So in the y direction, what forces do we have? Well, we've got the normal force. And then we've got gravity, which is pressing the object against the ramp. And that's going to be m1g times the cosine of theta, which is going to equal 0. And from this, we can see that the normal force is m1g times the cosine of theta, which, since there's no friction in this problem, won't make any difference. However, uh, in the problem with friction, we will need to know that because uh, the normal force is, uh, is included in frictional calculations. The friction is proportional to the normal force. Well, finally, we get to the last object. Now, there are no x forces. For this one, there are only y forces. And so the sum of the, whoops, the, sum of the forces in the y direction is going to equal acceleration, m2a. Now, in the y direction, we can see what we have positive and negative. And positive and negative is going to be m2g minus t equals m2a. And, um, and that's about as far as I can go with anything here until I start combining the results. So um, let's see, in this one we had two forces, in this one we had two, and in this one we also had two forces. So let's now do that. Let's, uh, let's combine forces and let's see what we can do. Let's solve this one for t here first. So I get m1a plus m1g sine of theta. Let's do it this way. Let's solve for the tension in both of them and then set the equations equal. So minus t is going to equal m2a minus m2g. And if I multiply everything by a minus 1, I get t equals minus m2a plus m2g. So now I have an equation for t on my left and an equation for t on my right, and essentially, I can set them equal to each other. And so, I can say that m1a plus m1g sine of the angle is equal to minus m2a plus m2g. And uh, as we did in the other two body problems, we can solve for the acceleration. I'm going to add m2a to both sides, and so I get m1a plus m2a plus m1g sine theta equals m2g left all by itself. Well, now I'm going to subtract this term from both sides so that I get m1a plus m2a equals m2g minus m1g sine of theta. Finally, we need to isolate the acceleration term. So what do I do? I factor out the acceleration. I get acceleration times m1 plus m2 equals m2g minus m1g sine of the angle. And then finally, the acceleration equals m2g minus m1g sine of the angle all over m1 plus m2. Um, so this is our equation for acceleration. And you can see what's happening here. m2g is falling. 
M1G is trying to fall the other way, but it's on a ramp and it can't fall with its full force, so you multiply it by the sine of theta. Notice the masses are acting uh, together, so it's M1 plus M2. One last item here before we <clears throat> run out of time, that is for this is a, a ramp. On the Atwood machine, remember we had this, M2, M1, and the formula for the Atwood machine was M2G, assuming M2 was a larger mass, Mg over M1 plus M2. And notice the difference. There's no sign of theta there. Okay? It's very interesting. And if you look at the equation for this situation, where we have M1 and M2 falling down, we have A equals M2G over M1 plus M2. So you can see the relationship between all the equations. In the last example I've drawn on the table, M1 isn't falling at all. So it's not reducing the acceleration. It's just acting as an inertial uh, addition to the acceleration. So take a look at those equations and see their relationship to one another. And that's it for this video.